Well, so many people are kind, you know, they, they remember daddy too. Mm -hmm. And so we're grateful for that. But we each have to have our own life. And, and I think mother and daddy encourage us to be individuals. And uh, so I don't, we lost the patriarch, but he'd been gone for quite a while. Mm -hmm. You know, he was not with us mm -hmm. for quite a while. So um, we've adapted, but it's not easy. I, I miss him. I miss knowing he's here, yeah. you know, just in the world. Yeah. But uh, I know where he is. For the first time in my life, I know where my father is. He usually was somewhere. I had no clue where he was. Yeah. But now I know where, exactly where he is. Oh, we miss him too. Mm. Tell me what it was like growing up as a Graham child. Well, we didn't know any different. Yeah. He was daddy. And um, we, we grew up in a small community of retired missionaries and retired pastors. And um, they were used to traveling the globe preaching the gospel. So we grew up in that kind of atmosphere. And when they saw a little Graham misbehaving, they didn't gossip about us, they prayed for us. Mm -hmm. And what a difference that made. And every Wednesday morning, I remember seeing some of the older folks walking to my grandparents' house to have a prayer meeting and they'd be on their knees praying. And uh, what an example that was for us. So I know that that was the foundation of what it was like. Um, but it was only until I, um, went off to boarding school mm. and people treated me differently mm. that I thought that something was different. And uh, I never felt entitled. Mother and daddy never would let us feel entitled. Mm -hmm. But uh, people treated us differently mm. and that made me realize that hmm, something is different. But um, we just grew up a normal family. I mean, we were just as dysfunctional as everybody else. <laughs> I kind of I wonder about that, Ruth, but okay, we'll go with that. You also share in your new book, Forgiving My Father, Forgiving Myself, that you didn't know what it was like to spend time with just your dad, but That's there right. were always people around. That's right. There are always are. When you have a person of note or you have a, a politician or you have someone who's in the business world, they usually have assistants and people around them all the time, and we did. And these people were friends. I mean, they became like family, but they weren't family. Mm -hmm. And my father was, he traveled a lot. And when he came home, he was tired or preoccupied mm -hmm. or preparing for the next um, event. Yeah. So he didn't have much time, especially for a younger daughter who tends to be um, more introverted mm -hmm. and quieter. And um, so it was just, I didn't have that kind of time with my father. And I I missed it and I wasn't the kind that would assert myself and grab it. You know, some are very, you know, they'll go get it whether they are welcomed or not, yeah. but, um, but I didn't. And I, I wish that I had done more of that, but I didn't because that was my personality. Mm. And so through the years, you're kind of burying things away and you kind of reveal some of that, a lot of it in your new book, Forgiving My Father, Forgiving Myself. Uh, why did you decide to write this book? It's so candid and so honest. Thank you. And also this part of forgiving my father is also forgiving God Yeah. for um, not meeting my expectations. Mm -hmm. You know, and God sometimes doesn't meet our expectations, our human expectations, because our expectations fit our thinking, not his. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's in there too. But I uh, wrote this book because I've struggled with forgiveness mm -hmm. and forgiveness is a struggle. And I have struggled with it and I thought, you know, if I'm struggling with it, there are bound to be a lot of other people who have struggled. So I began to read and I thought, you know, I want to find out what worked, what didn't work, what, uh, what is appropriate, what's biblical. And I couldn't find a book that was really honest, you know, really grappled with it, struggled with it. And I thought, well, then I'll just write it. So that's what I did. Oh, you did it so well. Oh, thank you. So well, Ruth. You talk candidly about your first marriage mm -hmm. and that really was an exercise in forgiveness. Yes. And also just peeling back a lot of layers of things that you had hidden inside. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that heart-wrenching time in your life. Well, I grew up around honorable men. Yeah. Never occurred to me that my husband of 18 years had been unfaithful to me for a number of years. And um, it just pulled the rug out from under me. And um, we tr worked it out, tried to work it out through counseling. We did everything we could. But I realized that forgiveness is unconditional. Mm. Reconciliation is conditioned on the changed behavior of the one who's done the wounding. And my husband wasn't changing. And I felt, you know, I just can't do this anymore. And that's when I, I claimed promises, you know, the latter will be greater than the former and, and he will do a new thing in you. But those promises were fit my thinking. He was, God was doing a new thing in me. Mm -hmm. I was gonna be different mm -hmm. than I was before. So I 
I had to look at it through God's eyes and not my own. And it was a very hard time. It was hard on my children. And I was so angry with my husband. And it really wasn't, he died shortly thereafter, after we divorced. It wasn't until after he died that I was able to come to a place of forgiveness and say, I forgive you. And God, would you tell him that I have forgiven him? Because, and I know there's no theology for that, but God can work that out. Yeah. And I just felt that it was important for me to be able to forgive my first husband for, for his infidelity. You allude to, Ruth, that you were, like, you were donning a mask. Mm. Even when you found out about your husband's adultery, putting on the mask, like many of us do, pretending everything is okay, you know, wanting to gloss everything over, and holding in the anger, because you were not taught to be angry. That's right, no, we were not allowed to be angry. And, you know, I remember asking my mother, saying something to my mother, like, I'm angry. You can't be angry. Mm. Well, but what did I do with those emotions? Yeah. You know, because anger isn't a real emotion. And it's, it, Paul says, be angry, but don't, don't sin. Um, so I just stuffed it. Mm. And I stuffed it and I stuffed it and I stuffed it. And that's not a healthy thing to do. Yeah. And be, again, I talk about in the book that because my father was gone, I... Um, felt insecure. And again, I read it as abandonment. Mm -hmm. He, bless his heart, he would never have wanted to do that. But I felt insecure. And I would have said, Jesus is my security. Mm -hmm. But deep down where the secrets are kept, that wasn't true. So I began to look for security elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And married, a rebound marriage Mm -hmm. that lasted three months. um, And he was abusive. So I thought, well, I'm not going to I knew enough not to stay in an abusive marriage. And let me just tell your audience, do not stay in an abusive relationship. You have a spiritual responsibility to yourself and to your children to take care of them. And uh, it's very important to be able to recognize that. And I have a friend in New York who says, you know, we can go to the zoo and we can enjoy the animals, but we don't have to get in the cage with them. Yeah. And I think it's important to remove ourselves from a toxic situation, abusive situation. But... um, I left him and uh, shortly married another man Mm -hmm. who we were married for 10 years and absolutely adored him. And he decided after 10 years, he didn't want to be married anymore. And I was just devastated, Mm -hmm. just totally devastated. And so I was single for a while, but then a man came along that I'd known for 20 years and he was a pastor and a counselor and he'd he'd known the family and he knew all my buttons to push. Mm -hmm. And I married him and he was not a good guy. And so he divorced me. Mm-hmm. And emotionally I, abusive. Emotionally, yeah. verbally, emotionally, yeah. every way. Yeah. And so I just said, I'm done with that, yeah. you know? And, but he divorced me because I, I knew scripturally I wanted to be on scriptural ground. So I went through the process of Matthew 18, mm. where you, you go to the person, you go with other people, then you go before the church. So I did that process and he looked at me one day and he said, I never loved you. And Ruth, what was that like when you heard those words? Well, I was, at that point I was sort of numb, Yeah. but I was embarrassed and ashamed because I was sitting in front of some elders and I thought, oh, these people are gonna think what in the world. Mm. But when you get to a certain point, it doesn't matter. You just, you want honesty and you want truth in your relationship. Mm -hmm. And so I I realized that I was on the right track and that God was with me. And I had seen this man through a horrific automobile accident Mm -hmm. and I had taken care of him. And when I got home from the hospital and he got home from the hospital, found out he had spent me into a hundred thousand dollars worth of debt. And I remember asking him, why did he do that? Mm -hmm. And he said, I wanted people to think I'd landed on my feet, Wow! but he landed on my back. Wow! And this man was, um, a narcissist, he was a sociopath. And so he knew everything to do to sort of yeah. be what he wanted people to think he was. But I realized that it was more important for me with the Lord to take care of myself mm. and to obey the Lord and to get out of that relationship because it was pulling me down. And the elders of the church certainly agreed. So that was not a problem. But after your fourth marriage, you also (laughs) sat down with a friend who said, Ruth, 
you might be just dealing with abandonment mm -hmm. issues, and this might be the root of your father's relationship with you. That's right. And that's when you start to peel back those layers and realize, yeah, that was really the crux of it. That's right. I think we all have core issues, yeah. and if we find that we are um, repeating a sin or repeating a pattern, we have to look at the core issue. And I had to look at the core issue, but I thought I had. Yeah. I had years of counseling, yeah. but there was this dear friend who sat with me, and we were talking about it, and I was just sort of beating myself up, and he said, Ruth, he said, um, you felt abandoned as a little girl, and I didn't want that to be true. Mm. I said, no, I, you know, my father was my hero. He is my hero, and he would never have hurt my heart but I knew it was true. That piece of the puzzle fit. And once I put it in the puzzle, mm -hmm. everything sort of calmed down mm -hmm. and I learned to forgive myself because there are no excuses, but sometimes there are reasons. Yeah. And so once I had the reason, I could forgive myself. There was also, we only have three minutes and I really want to get to this point too, also dealing with unforgiveness with your mom mm -hmm. and just tension with your mm -hmm. mom. You allude to a story of Sheila Walsh writing mm -hmm. a, a beautiful recollection of spending time with your mom. And for you, that grieved you because you didn't have that same experience with your mother. No, I didn't. My mother was a wonderful lady, just a delightful lady. Mm -hmm. And I, I loved her. But, and the Lord showed me that how much I loved her when she died. But I didn't have that close relationship with her. I think we were, were opposites um, and so it was difficult. But she was, um, she didn't want to have a wounded child. Mm. She loved wounded people, mm. but she didn't want a wounded child. And she certainly didn't want a wounded daughter talking about her woundedness. Mm. And so it was very difficult for mother when I wrote my first book, In Every Puce It's a Broken Heart. Yeah. She did not like that at all. And, um, but yet I had to be true to what God had called me to do. Yeah. And she couldn't understand that. And, and I don't think she ever did. Mm. But when she died, I said, Lord, I need to know that I truly loved my mother. Mm. And as I cared for her body, I realized, yes, you really do. I really did love my mother. So Ruth, I know that there are people watching who are dealing with unforgiveness with a loved one, a spouse, a friend. What is the key that, you, that people need to realize when walking that journey of forgiveness? Well, first we're talking, I believe, to believers. I mean, you have yes. to be a believer. You have to be a Christian because then you make the choice. You make Forgiveness is a decision. Whether you feel like it or not, you can say, I choose to forgive so-and-so. Then that's the doorway by which the Holy Spirit walks into that decision and then He enables it. So you really have to rely on the Holy Spirit. Will it happen today? Will it happen tomorrow? Probably not. Mm -hmm. And you will have emotions that roll back and you'll think, oh, I really didn't forgive. Yes, you did. You made the choice to forgive, but the emotions don't tell the truth. Yeah. And so you have to go back and say, I did forgive, and this is the date I forgave, and the Holy Spirit, you helped me m move on through it. Mm, it's a daily decision. Absolutely. Every single mm -hmm. day. Sometimes every moment. <laughs> yes, yeah, amen to that one. Thank you so much, Ruth. Thank you so much for oh, having me. The name of the book is Forgiving My Father, Forgiving Myself, An Invitation to the Miracle of Forgiveness. Maybe you needed to hear Ruth's story today. Maybe you're struggling through unforgiveness. You're, you're thinking, but Ruth, you don't know, or Maggie, you don't know what I've gone through. We don't need to know what you've gone through, but we do know that there is power in forgiveness and forgiveness is possible. Putting aside the faults and saying, you know what? I'm gonna come to you as the way Jesus came to us, forgiving us of our sins. If you need encouragement today, if you need prayer today, call our prayer lines, 1-866-273-4444, or you can email prayer at crossroads.ca. Amazing people who have walked the walk, talked the talk, who have walked through the journey of forgiveness for themselves, can give you advice and also pray with you today and encourage you.